Well, that would explain all the that would explain. Okay. Thank you for that little interruption. Yeah. So yeah, the traffic ordinance uh, is actually a series of changes. So when you think of traffic ordinance, there's um, two main topics. One is speed limits themselves. We're not changing stop sign locations or adding stop sign locations. And then the third location is parking. The only changing item in parking is um, I would say it's a maintenance request from a highway. The current ordinance talks about uh, no parking in park, park, parking spaces or travel lanes. Of course, travel lanes are already covered by state law. You can't park in the road. What's not covered under the cur current ordinance is people parking in the snow wing zone. So the wing zone is generally nine to 10 feet off the edge of the road where there's actually, they, they'll put that wing down on the side of the road and try to push four or five feet out or cut off a really deep snow and push it 10 feet out if it's really deep snow. Of course, if there's a car there or a truck parked for the winter, uh, we don't have any direct clean uh, ability to tow and remove that, which would be covered by this ordinance because the ordinance changes no parking to winter in the right of way. That's 25 feet from the center. There's going to be some exceptions where there's a residential parking space where there's no other place for them to park, potentially, almost like we have to let mailboxes in the snow zone. Oh. But for generally, if people are parked and they have options, they need to get out of the right of way and get that. You know, it's, it's, it's basically 10 or 12 feet from the edge of pavement or edge of road, not parking right where the wing is going to be operating. So that would be a new tool in the highway maintenance toolbox. A lot of towns do that. Yeah, winter. you see signs. Yeah, right. you know, you know entire right. right of way, winter not just the travel lane or shoulder, which is uh, not helpful to highway crews on their combine with their fourteen foot blade no. to try to scoot around those cars. Well, that was so that's one other thing. Speed limit that that changes that. are listed, and we have, uh, I think, two choices. That's what it is. You have a list of roads that are identified for changes up or down. Every change under state law is supposed to have a traffic engineering study, which supports the change or at least gives the gives the thorough evaluation of that road segment. Speed limit, traffic volume, number of driveway cuts, paved or gravel, corners, all these little factors about the up, about the road. And that results in a traffic engineering study, <clears throat> that study is not done for all of the roads. There's three of them. They take, I was trying to time it, maybe a half an hour for each one, if you have the data. If you don't have the data, then you have to wait for the data, which is produced by regional planning with their traffic studies, where they produce a pretty thick report when they have the tubes across the road, and they can tell you speed and volume. Oh. Some, sometimes you can ask them to tell you what type of vehicle, tractor, trailer, motorcycle they can report onto. Typically, we're just after vehicle count and speed, and those get that summary gets put into the traffic study for the ordinance stream. So, obviously, we've had requests on these roads from three or four roads primarily, but we went through and tried to do two other things, which is Historically, remember where people have complained about roads, put those on the list and make some changes to the description. So you, every speed zone has a beginning and end point. Yeah. And some of the descriptions weren't quite clear. So those changes have been made as well. Uh, for example, using the village limits versus an intersection, what kind of things. So the current draft includes all of that and a decision by the board to do one of two things you can and this is i've heard two different legal opinions on this so one of the options this is the, the two different opinions state law says you can adopt the speed limit with a traffic and uh, study you can adopt a 35 for all gravel roads with no study so those are your two first kind of general choices and then it says the lack of a traffic and speed study won't negate the effectiveness of that for enforcement <clears throat> if the speed limit signs been up for five years, which means Mark would have to 
time date stamp and try to collect that data because that's the that's the alternate to a traffic study is evidence that Mark would certify an affidavit. Yes, that's been posted 35 for five years because I was here five years and every year I check those signs and every year 35 is up. And that would be like a run on sentence that uh, the court would get gotcha. if somebody was fighting the ticket. Yeah. Or we had a request for last week, uh, where's your traffic study for Battle Road, right? So where is that study? Regional planning had the tubes out, I think late mid-September. It was right after school started, I think. And I haven't seen that data yet, so I can't produce the traffic study. Uh, Centerville Road, I thought was done on the gravel section, but I couldn't find it in my records. So I'd have to ask the only other people that do local roads or regional planning office. So I'd ask them and say, do you guys have this buried in there within the last five or six years or something? And then that could be used in a traffic study. So I, I'm not really, I, I, my recommendation would always be just follow the strict, you know, you guys have roads, make a list, check the traffic study, verify that the speed limit uh, is within five or 10 miles of the 85th percentile, which is the average speed of most cars drive at a certain speed, and then post your speed limit like that. That gets written up in the traffic study, gets attached to the ordinance, gets filed with the town clerk. Usually the police will stop by, somebody's challenged a ticket, they come to the town clerk, the clerk certifies the ordinance, gives them a copy of the traffic study. The, the officer goes to court, presents it to the judge, and the judge says, looks good to me. What, what was the reason for speeding? And then they get, so at least the ordinance is doing its job on an, on an appeal. Right. If you don't do that and you just have these the ordinance go through and do speed limit changes and then basically have non-enforcement for five years because you won't have the traffic study. The legal difference of opinion was what happens if the select board adopted a, let's say a speed limit of uh, 45 on Trombley Hill, no traffic study, five years goes by, somebody challenges it because they got a ticket for 70 out there, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> can go fast on that road. You can. Uh, <laughs> And the judge says, yep, Mark, Mark's affidavit is attached to this uh, filing by the police officer, and you guys are good because you, you've proven that you had that posted. <laughs> that, I don't know if it's, that's the part I don't know if it actually sticks. Nobody's going to tell me if it works that way. Right. It's in the it's in the state law, but nobody's able to say, yes, we, we see that we've all the time. That. Yeah. So, of course, when I presented the Battle Row ordinance to the person that called last week, it said 25 from, from 2000, it was 25. All the way up until the 2018, it was 25. And this one is the first time that you're thinking of increasing it above 25. But the signs were put in at 35. And the signs weren't put in for the rest of the road because that's outside the village. So that was 50 outside the village limits, which is about 0.7 miles from Route 100. So the attempt here on Battle Road is to break it up into three segments and wait for that traffic study to come back and see if 35 should be on the first part, then go to 45 for the middle part, and then just before you get into the like little S curves before Grimes Road, it goes back to 35. So you'd have two ends of 35 as you come to those intersections and then 45 in the middle. Until yeah. recently, it's never been posted at 25. Right. 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 Okay. The ordinance is always 1025. Right. I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't think it was ever supposed to anything different than 25. Nobody's pushed that back and forth. It's been 25 since at least 2000 when the village adopted that ordinance. But, so, wait, wait, but it was signed at 30. Yeah. 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 But so they, it, was a conf it was basically unenforceable right. because the, oh, right. the, the yeah. ordinance was in conflict with the signage. But and then the people that, that were speaking up were upset that it was so low, right? Well, there's suddenly 25 showed up because they're like, that is oh, crazy for that. To match so, the ordinance. To match the ordinance. Okay, right. So they were just assuming it was 45 because it wasn't. Or 35, 35 or 50 or I don't know. Got it. Yeah, I don't okay. know. If you're on the other, there was okay. no signage past that 0.7 miles, I think. It was never signed out that way, right? Or was no, it? it stopped before the village was limited. Yeah. And like at 50. Okay. It but it wasn't posted. It was actually, it's supposed to be 25 But it wasn't 50 posted. 
It wasn't posted. It was a default or unposted. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so people get used to doing the 10 over. End yeah. of 35. Yeah. Gotcha. So right. Whenever you see the end of speed limit without a new speed limit sign, if the default is 50 slash 60 for enforcement sometimes. Well, that would be an interesting case that if we have one way it's the ordinance is 25, but it's been posted 35 forever. No, it just got posted 35, I think. No, no, it got posted 20. Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry. That's, and that's where the. So you, can, you have to, in order yeah. to have it, no. you have to have a bolt the same. Right. Got it. Right. So whatever you put in this ordinance should be based on a traffic study and the signs and that to it. And then you carry on and et cetera with the you know, filing with the town clerk. Now, if you wanted to try the immediate posting to 35, that's. You know, it's almost like posting something that initially won't be enforceable. I don't know if that's a best practice for a town, but would you solve any problem, create a new problem? That's almost like a legal question. Well, if we if remove the no, we remove the twenty five, and just go back to where it had default fifty, where it was. Where, well, but the thirty five was there. You know, people made that assumption at the thirty five. Oh, I don't know if they would swing. I didn't, you know, are, there, like, are there signs for 35 out there? I can't remember. No, no, no post I'm, I'm on Battle Road. I know, I know, I just done up the 25. Did you take down the 35? Okay. That's where the 25s are. Well, okay. <laughs> That's how they work. I got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the road is unposted all the way to Graps. Right. right. So, so that's, that's where, this, where this default speed comes in. Same thing with Centerville Road is 50 because it's unposted. But people don't like either once they find out about it usually. So it's a delay if you don't do anything now. It, the people will, will see some <laughs> progress because you can say, this is what we're doing about all of this. There's 10 roads on our list that we're amending and truing up and getting accurate and it will be enforceable at the end. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Whether people can hold their breath for a 60 to 75 day process, that's that's your decision to make. Um, Mark will need to uh, look at these. If you do the ordinance while the ground's not frozen, he would have to go preset the signs for the new signs. So things can be happening while nothing's happening, if you will. But things will be happening on the timeline that's required for the enforcement when the ordinance passes its uh, petition period for a public vote. Uh, if it passes the 45 days, then it's it's done at that point from your date of adoption. Whether you could um, pass the ordinance tonight based on the draft and then catch up with the traffic study, maybe, you know, sort of like before it actually becomes effective, all the traffic studies are done and regional planning does the best they can. The ones that don't have a traffic study would be on default on that five-year plan because you're not gonna have it you know, until next year maybe. And then you true up the ordinance again, maybe readopt it once those new traffic studies come in. I don't know how quickly I can get them. Usually they have two roads a year. So regional planning doesn't necessarily do all the roads all the time. They do it by two or three road segments of a summer, sometimes five if they're light duty on the county workload. You can go forward. You definitely can go forward with the three traffic studies that we have. We have those done for Garfield, Trombley, and uh, Centerville. Centerville by the fire station. Paved. But we Paved. could we hold this open for say a month and leave it out for public comment so people like Steve could make comments on each of the changes. So we have like a running spreadsheet to say rather than buy the signs, adopt it like we did at Battle Row and then have people react to it and say, wow, I hate this. Yeah, we, we have all this money invested. I don't in. know if that's such a well, good we idea. Have a, we have a summary. There's no way we're going to make everybody happy and we're just going to cause it. Uproar. Well, it's our might, job to make the decisions. But you, you might do that by just putting the signs out there like we just did. Well, we didn't. No, it's dead. <laughs> no, the time it happened. Yeah. 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 Being yeah. blind to what village. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, right. The village wanted the 25 there right. from 2000. Right. And then the select board took over the ordinance in 2018, made it clear that it was a town issue, not village should not be assigning speed limits to town highways. That wasn't clear until 2018. Uh -huh. I, I know Garfield Road's crazy. Like I agree. That is insane. But like we we might insane. be putting in, uh, like Steve 
did his own study, drove around the town. I haven't driven around the town, so it's easy for me to say, yeah, let's do this. But maybe I need to drive around just to just to just walk Garfield Road in the morning. I don't need to walk Garfield. I, I, got, I, li I live not far from you. Center Road to say it's, it's not. It's not same, right. That's fresh pavement. I get it. Not at all. You know what's going to happen? Nothing. I get nothing, but yeah. I feel like I can. No, there's going to be more of a presence or people can feel like, oh, but, maybe you have a guilty conscience here. Well, well it's, not, it's not just that, but I think, the, you know, everybody, and, and Rolly said, and a lot of people, and I think you'll see some comments that have come in, you know, you can post the signs you want, and the people that are going to be idiots are going to be idiots. Right. And, you know, there's not much. The only way you can do that is enforcement. Right. A lot of people already think we spend too much on the sheriff's budget. If you want more traffic enforcement, you're going to have to spend more money. Yeah, right. But, but, the point of doing it this way is when we do have the traffic enforcement that does happen periodically, at least it'll stand up in court. Right. Yeah. So you need to sort of do this. Then you've got a platform. So when you do have enforcement, it sticks. And I think when new signs go up, it will change in the beginning. What, what, well, whatever right, happens that in, state law they were working on. Didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I just did that. That's a good, we're kind of waiting for that. Oh, no, how, 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 how come North Lake Park Road didn't make it on the list? It did. It's black. There's a couple roads that didn't make it on the list. Some some of the roads are not purposely not put on the list. Short dead end roads type things. Uh, yeah. North High Park Road. I feel like that's a big one in our town, and that's a true North End. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very true. true. Okay. It's from. It's basically from. Center Road, Centerville, to all the way into Barry Street. Yeah, yeah, we could definitely look at that. I think there are some traffic studies on that. That one, yeah, that's a big one. Where does that turn north? I go right at the corner of the barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it and then it changes the Barry Street okay. at um, the corner where it sort of before he just before he yeah. are uh, the the way they sell yeah. Christmas trees. Christmas trees, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. So, Vanessa, let's let's questions. adopt it. Matt says, "Wait a month." I just want to see, like, a a cost. What are we looking at for a cost? B. What are we What are we seeing for? Are we Are we putting this all on mark for winter install? Or are we just? A, I just so we're voting on the whole thing, so it's okay. If we start this and we leave out North High Park Road, do we do we just not do North High Park Road and then somebody who lives on North High Park Road decides uh, why isn't there a sign on my road? Well, you have the list next year to wait for uh, a, a month is what I'm saying. We we waited waited. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm trying to get the, the speed limits. Put in according to the conditions of the road. Yeah, so, and then, so that on. so last week we voted on this, and that's what we were saying. Okay. So we, we, we were, I'm, 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 I'm hear me out, Steve. I'm just saying a list of each road, and we talked about driving them. I just want to drive them and say, is this appropriate? Can, can you do 55 on Upper Center Road? I don't know, but I don't want to adopt this and say, yeah, you can do 50, and then say put it in. I want to drive it and say maybe that should be 45. Why well, haven't you done this before? Because <laughs> you don't have my like it. Because this we think, yeah, Steve, three months. Hey, since you've done this, look, there's four pieces of paper on this, so you can't think nothing's been done. There's a whole map on it. So it's not, it's not, you're not in a position to do it. Uh, I think we are. I'm saying within two two meetings, we at least make sure that we actually have something. We've got, we've got traffic signs put up on Battle Road that are unenforceable. We've got. Traffic sign at the end of Susan Bartlett's road. You know, 35 minutes. And it should be 30. That's what I'm saying. So exactly what you're saying. Now, but if we adopt this tonight, Steve. Wait, wait, let me finish. Okay. Susan is the chair of the board. Why can't she have at least her and her drivers posted correctly? Because it's more convenient to have a 25 mile an hour sign there than there's 35 for slowing down the traffic for her purpose. Okay? Well, the folks come but into the you try to go 50 down 
Center Hill Road. Nobody has tried. I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, you probably um, by, by your house. house? I have gone fifty out there. By your house. By your house. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And what's the safe street that you've driven down to there? I probably wouldn't buy it 45 50. I, until last okay. week, until, okay. until last you week, you went down from there 50 miles. You your put a lot of people's lives in danger. I'll blame on the phone. Wait, so we don't. I need mean, yeah. one person. Yeah. Wait, wait, this time, Steve. Okay, let's just have one person at a time, too, because recording and people listening just can't hear it. So, Steve, go ahead. But then the other yeah. thing that upsets me is when was the last traffic study done? to change the portion of the center row and center row to 45. When was that done? 2018, maybe. Okay. okay. Who in their right mind approved that and not address the speed limits on the dirt roads? Isn't that state order? Why is it considered uh, not safe to go more than 45 on Centerville Road, uh, the bay portion of Centerville in Centerville, but yet it's safe to go 50 on these dirt roads. Susan made up, brought up a point about the budget for the sheriff department. I think the board is wasting our money paying the more sheriff department anything to patrol the roads because they have told me more than once that they do not pick up people for speeding unless they're going at least 10 to 15 miles over the speed limit because it's not worth their while. And it usually gets thrown out. Okay? Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. What I'm saying is the same thing. But on this map, and we're, we're moving forward, Steve, on this map, there's only one sign going at your house. You were very involved in this. I threw your name out in the last meeting, just for the record, and I said get you involved in this meeting to make sure that where the proper posting is, because you did a very good job of that, why not allow someone like you and one other person to say, hey, are we missing two signs in this? Instead of adopting this tonight and then having 15 other signs, Allie might want one up by her house, or there might there might not be. I haven't been able to go out here and say, yes, there's a sign here, yes, there's a sign there, because this is the, we're finally getting a map. I'm saying it stays on our agenda. We still vote on this. This isn't like this is going away. We've got five pieces of paper on this now, but at least it's a something that's more realistic. Uh, I have fear that I will not live long enough <laughs> for the board to well, make a decision on the safety of these town roads. I have I have faith, Steve, that you won't give up until we do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll just probably at some point say the hell of it. Get out of <laughs> yeah, we're close. We're almost there. I've, I've been on the board two years, and the first time that you came in for it was three months ago, less than three. That, that happened twice. I, I, I mean, so, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, and not stop. What I'm saying, Steve, is obviously five pages, six pages that we're taking it serious. I want to make sure that it's done right instead of just adopting it. Because we look at it tonight and say, let's adopt this. Why not be educated and adopt it? Have you looked at this map? I have. So you're okay with not putting one on North Park Park Road? I think North Park Park Road should be 50, just like their roads. So then how do we know that it's not on here? That's what I'm saying. I want to put that on the map. Let's put it on the freaking map. Well, you can, we can, we can add that. Yeah, yes. you can add things, but you, if you don't have a study done, see, that's when we get into what has a study done and right. what doesn't have a study done. I want, but it's still enforceable. Mark if, about, yeah. if we get the, if we get the meat, let's be honest, someone goes into court on a speeding ticket, they're not going to come follow affidavits for five years. But this is more about awareness, in my opinion. And Right, and they decided that's what we're doing, and we're not so concerned about it being enforceable. As you were saying, new signs go up, people pay attention. People certainly pay attention to 25 miles per hour. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me, Mark, if if we were to adopt this, how many new signs are we talking about? Uh, what we adopt? Everything that's here? 
There must be some signs there. Yeah, have a speed limit sign, reduce speed limit sign. Yeah, no, they're, they're talking to, they're talking a couple hundred bucks per sign. Okay. You know, the sign posts, and we're talking how many? I'd have to write them and see. Uh, You're supposed to have one at pretty much at every intersection that comes onto that road so on each side of it. If that road is not there, can we forward with it? I'm all about that. I just want to make sure there's the I still don't even know other than some dots on this. I don't even know where we're putting time in. Are we only putting one up on by his house. That's that's it. One on Steve's. I just get highlighted, but you need you have to have proper amount per road if you can. but there's rules about uh, yes. Right. That's, well, what, that's what Mark that's what right. that's right. That's what Nasty Mark now. I mean the L C P C will help him on that. Okay. This uh, this map doesn't show us where the those signs are going. They just right? go the just, changes. Yeah, the okay. rules are changes. Yeah. Right. So the I don't exactly know which way you're headed, but if you wanted that information, we Mark and I would use the the summary list. Yeah. Right. So get the puts, who get the sign cuts. Yeah. So who put who puts where the signs are going? And that's just Mark just goes on the standard. standard. No, There's a federal standard. standard. Correct. Yeah. But so Mark federal standard, but what we just said, North Bay Park's not on here. Are you gonna add that or not? That's a question. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Though. Let's finalize this thing. And yes. Let, do you want me to read the list yet? so people listening know the well, list? That, that's true. I don't think anybody knows what the list is yet. Yeah, that's not like we're sitting here looking at the map. Okay. Okay. There you go. You start there. there. Yeah. There we go. This is your informational. There, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, a spreadsheet that what, what we are. No, we, we I'm working off one. That's why okay. to track these traffic studies. So um I'm just gonna give the road and I guess it's the proposed speed limit and whether it's posted now or not. So if I say if I say unposted, that's the 50. Mm -hmm. So Maury Road, which is on off Depot Street down south side of the rail trip, uh, 25 miles per hour unposted now. Sterling View Road, 25 miles per hour unposted. Centerville Road paved section at the uh, Route 5th Bean to Noise Farm. That's now 25 would go to 35. That's the fire station section. Centerville Road gravel and paved. This is the gravel section by Steve down to um, North High Park Road, which is paved. That would uh, be unposted now. That's going 35. There are S curves on the paved section. That's why that justifies a 35. You know, that's what the traffic study would show. Yeah. Battle Row Road, 35 miles per hour for uh, 0.3 miles from Route 100. Now posted at 25. After the 0.3 miles, it changes to 45. Right now, for another 0.4 miles, it's 25 before it goes to unposted. So right now, the 0.3 is 25, and the 25 continues for another 0.4. Yeah. So that 0.3, to 0.70, that section now, which is now posted at 25, would change to 45, which is the rest of Battle Row yeah. out to uh, Mason Road. Mason Road, it goes to 35 miles an hour, where it's unposted now, to Grimes Road. So there's another set of S curves in that last yeah. section with the hill. And then it turns. Sure. No. Not yet. Not yet. No. Right. 20 years ago, it was dirt. Okay. <laughs> 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 like just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Noise Farm Road. Uh, that's a very short section. It's 0 0.04 miles from Centerville Road to just past Pear Farm Road, somewhere in there. It's like, I don't even know how many feet it is, but that's right. posted at 25. That would go to 35 to match the rest of Noise Farm Road, which is already 35. Garfield Cross Road, 35. That connects Garfield Road to Cleveland Corners Road. That's now unposted. Cricket Hill Road, car, that's a combination of gravel and paved, uh, 35 miles per hour. I think it is posted at the bottom end on Vermont 15, maybe. I think there's one sign in the school district office that's 35. They yeah. don't know about the rest of the road. It may just be that one sign uh, for the paved section. As you go up the hill towards Crab Apple and up to the school trails, that's gravel and unposted, I believe, um, with a very serious S-curves up in there. Trombley Hill Road, unposted, 
moved to 45 for the whole length. Cleveland Corners Road, uh, this is from Trombley Hill to all the way to Garfield. That goes past Davis Hill. That's a paved and gravel mix as well. That would go to 45. And the last one is whether you want to add North Northside Park Road, but Garfield Road, paved section from the Morrisville <laughs> to the Cleveland Corner. Then any other roads that people have to add. So Matt, would you put in Northside Park Road at 45? Yeah, I would I would stay consistent if it's paved. Okay. Oh. It's 45. I mean, okay. I, I agree with what Steve's saying. If we have a paved road that's 45, why is a dirt road 50? Well, like I, I don't understand why we can't just adopt consistency. If it's paved in the town, it's 45. You know, with it with the exception of well, like our traffic studies, but like a non-traffic right. study, let's adopt a 45 with paved roads. Well, <clears throat> you know, something to that effect. For that road, North High Park Road, eventually it changes. It's the same highway. Yeah. Down Highway 3. Ferry Road was missed from the list, too. Ferry Street. Ferry Street, which would be from Aethers to the town. It's, on, it's posted 35, I think, but not in the ordinance. Yes. Uh, suggestion was 25 from Route 100 to Heath Road, which is also the section of our sidewalk study that we just got yeah, the grant yeah. for. Yep. So we reduced that for being dense and you know all those other reasons you have a 25 in a village setting and then from Heath Road all the way to Centerville will be 45 yeah. if, if you add that so you'd have a break point somewhere in that that Heath Road is yeah. I always like to use intersections versus you know Eric Aether's house or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those kind of things are the old brown house on the corner yeah, yeah. yeah it's not there anymore yeah so Heath, <laughs> Heath Road to ET 100 and as far, as far as, again, like the, the postings, the speed limits, where the signs are going, you guys have mapped that, or that's NF? MUTCD stuff. Yeah, I know it's empty. Okay, I understand that, but what I'm saying is it's still, are you putting it on a map? Well, or are we not last, time we, a map? last there... time we did this with uh, Center and Centerville, Mark and I rode around, and I was taking notes, and we were trying to measure mileage. Every half mile to a mile, you're supposed to have another speed limit sign. For enforcement, even on you know some of these long stretches, you'll yeah. have an intermittent sign. I think it's a maximum. And if you have a inter yeah. if you have an interconnecting highway to another town, generally yeah. put another sign there to remind people coming in the sides that it's a whatever posted road. So there's a list, you know, maybe you know, I don't know. This, I mean, if I had to guess, it's probably under five thousand dollars for all the signs. Well, I just did, there's 11 roads. Well, now we've got 12, and I said three signs a road, and that's not going to be the case. That's Tri triple that, yes. Yeah, like more, like more, more roads a mile long, but quadruple that. But right. it, could, it could be just one at the beginning, because it's only two miles on each side. Right, that's what I'm saying. Your, yeah. your speed limits are going to be that, and you need reduced speed at each one of them. You need So you're going to quadruple that. Call well, it 12 signs per road. Well, no, not the ones that are half a mile long. Yeah, it's well, so it's Right, that was a lot of change. Center, center road would be full. Center road's down. There's yeah. up where we are. Yeah, yeah, that's done. That's done. There's speed no. lines all the way up. Uh, See, again, you you this, have one song. No. Yeah, but center road's down this way. But you have no songs in, in between, do you? No, there's one at the top of the hill, and there ain't another one. There's no, yeah, you gotta have one on each side of the four corners up here. Yeah, each right. yes. um, chair. Uh, you've got two signs on Centerville Road. So here's here's what we need. This is what I'm saying. This is like, oh, we can adopt it, but something finalizes the location with a spreadsheet so right. we can continue forward with this. That's what I'm saying. I, but I don't want to finalize this. We put the signs up, and he's chasing for the next seven months to make him happy, her happy, him happy, them happy. Why not make something final? Drive around, make a spot. This is where we're going to go with signs. Steve. You're a speed cop, dude. You fucking love this okay. stuff. Let's go. What 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 happened or what's the problem with the suggestion that Ron brought up where the select board uh, without having to do the traffic studies and stuff? Um, I don't know what you what, what, how you phrased it, but um, in, in the town of High Park, um, have all paved roads 45, all dirt roads 35, and then if you want to 
reduce certain sections to 25, do your study there. Okay. Yeah, I think as you know, to me, that makes a lot more sense than to spend all this time and energy doing the roads. Well, the last time in 2018, the select board specifically said we didn't want to have signs for every road because it, it would be a huge cost. We just don't even have time to do that in a year. There's so much, so much science would have to go in. What Steve's suggesting is another provision in the state law that says you can select board can do this traffic study speed limit thing and you can post road between 25 and 50 by a traffic study. Mm -hmm. Below that doesn't require a traffic study, but you make a blanket 35 for gravel. That's what I was trying to say. Earlier. So that one, but that still requires the posting. So you, you could, that's a lot of mile, a lot of signs. And that's a, that's that's one reason why it wasn't done because it, and then don't forget state has to be involved in that because of the state aid. Um, I don't know about that. The state I haven't heard that one before, but the state does get involved with uh, if we take their money, their grants. So if they have grants, they'll want to see all this done the, the right way, or we have to fix it. And they actually did Centerville Road for us. And I thought North, I, they did a couple of roads for us back in 2015 or so. 19? 19. I guess it was. Anyway, they. they 18, 18, 18. I thought they did North High Park Road, though. They didn't know. Oh, I know. They, they, they had to post the 50. Remember that? Yeah. So the state came in and because you didn't have a traffic ordinance on North High Park sure. Road, they had to post 50. Mm -hmm. And nobody liked 50 either. So they came down. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. All right. Do you have to do all these roads at the same time? Can you just section out and say, okay, we're going to do speed road now. And we'll study the rest. You know what happens? You, oh, go, you, you show up next week and say, how come Steve got a sign and I don't get a sign? So but, because I mean, our job is to make sure we're important. Yeah, well, that's what they're saying. It depends on who decides what's most important. Okay. Wait, stop. Everybody blames Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. Because that's it's much more easy and efficient to do it all at all. Oh, yeah, I, I so that's that. what we're doing. It just seems yeah. like cost is going to. Well, it, it is, but the cost is going to be there one way or the other. So we might as well find out what it costs, and then we go to work on putting up the signs. Second question. McHenry Hill, is that included in this? I didn't hear it mentioned. Or is that one that you heard about? Well, that's where if we go to the gravels 35, this yeah. is 45, yeah. it's taken care of. And, uh, so, have you guys driven on all of these roads? Because I'm getting the feeling no, because Dark of the Frog Road, I'm 35. <laughs> no, <laughs> that should be like 20, if anything. That road is like a goat path. No, no. no, 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 no. I, just, I just drove it to them. Yeah, how fast did you drive it? Why didn't you drive it? Why didn't you drive it? Why didn't you drive it? Savannah side, definitely, you should post that for sure. But then what is it on the Morseville side of Garfield Road? Because I've always known to be 50. So we're going to go 50 up Morseville side. There's a 30 on the Morseville side. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. Oh, yep. Yeah. When the sheriff uh, patrol these roads and say by the uh, the rare occasion we stop somebody and give them a ticket. They pay the ticket. Where does the money go? Sure. Well, it depends on what road they've got written on. Town road. Goes to the town. Goes to the town. Minus a fee. Okay. Court fee. Then why are we worried about the cost of safety for the town of Hyde Park residents when you can uh, increase the enforcement? Give out speed tickets and collect revenue from the speeders on these roads and maintain a more safe condition because, for walkers. Because law enforcement doesn't have the people capacity to do enforcement. And we haven't voted on this, so you don't really, you're putting words in my mouth that I didn't say. So uh, I don't really appreciate that comment. Well, because uh, this said that why are we? Worried about cost and not the safety well, of the town. That we talked about. Is we, haven't on, we haven't voted on. We haven't voted on. It's not going to be stopped. No, I haven't placed my vote. You're always throwing. Steve, I didn't. So you're putting yes. words in my mouth. So stop. Steve. Steve. 
Steve, if you can't tone it down, we're going to stop the conversation, okay? I need one person at a time to talk. And right, to imply that um, if the select board doesn't think about money, you want to bet how many taxpayers would be on us. What things cost is an important factor. It is not necessarily the deciding factor, but it is not a factor that we as responsible elected officials can ignore. All right, and, and to imply that we don't care about safety, um, I think is basically a cheap shot from you and that's not okay. We have worked hard. We appreciate you bringing these issues and, and being dogged about it, truly. I mean, it, it helps. But, you know, we're basically, this is a volunteer crew up here. And if you want to be treated respectfully, then you need to treat us respectfully, okay? Everybody just sort of needs to exhale. Now, what we need to know is how many signs, and again, if you if it takes you guys going out and doing again, or I don't know if the County Planning Commission can help. Um, so we, we know, we're not gonna know these, but about how many signs it's, it will take. And then we can figure out the money and it may take us a year to get it all posted, but that's okay. Then we can prioritize where we want to get it posted first, because it's not all gonna get done at once anyway, because it's something that, that, that the road crew's gonna fit in. So do we want to wait? I think pretty much this is what we're going to adopt. Do we want to wait till the next meeting? And by that time, you can we can have a guesstimate as to how many signs we need. Of course, the supply, then how long will it take to get signs? But then post, that's a completely different topic. Okay, does that work for everybody? Are we going off this? Are we going off the page 45, 35? Well, that's, that's the next going. Which I think it would be simpler to to do the you know to just do the two thirty five and forty five you know in the village you're going to went literally in the village not the mounds of the village you're going to do twenty five because that makes that makes sense and and the reality is that having to be terribly concerned about being enforced in court is not kind of high up there that we have to worry. About. In reality, because there isn't, I mean, and all the towns have the same issue. There just isn't enough law enforcement capacity to spend a lot of time on, for, on parole, on parole, or for parole. Roly, what would you like to see us do? It's a tough situation. <laughs> Matt, what do you think? I just you're the, you're the 45 35 makes sense. I just think the, these. the study is going to have to be the thing to do itself. That's that's the only legal way around. That's I mean, that's what the state law says. If you want to adopt, then you do the traffic study and you file right. the order. That's right. a very simple process. Uh, it does take time, you know, the 45 day order. That's, take that's time. the thing. Post, posting the signs, well, everything's involved with time. But if you follow the path, then you you put it to bed, you put it to bed, which is what I think Matt's been saying. Can we just flesh this out a little more and make sure that McKinstry Hill should or shouldn't be added, like Alex? Right. right. It's not added now. North High Park Road, should you have your 45 and 25? That was missed in this draft. Yep, I should add that because that makes sense to keep class twos that are paid 45. People get used to that. Right now, they're used to 50, 60 with no enforcement. You know what I mean? That's kind of. I, I, I think I expressed myself when they did the speed limit study on Stagecoach Road. That's not they caught a guy. They caught a guy speeding from the bottom of the hill to the diamond store. We set our signs all up, all the way down through there with the road study, set our signs all up. He went to court, the cop went to court. And they threw it out. Because it wasn't right? No. There was one sign missing down at the bottom of the hill. And so they called me in the morning to go check it out. And they were right. That sign was missing. Who do you think took that sign? <laughs> 
All I could tell him it was there. But yeah. the sign was missing when he went to court. Oh, there you go. Well, if we, yeah, kids take uh, the Garfield Road sign is missing. Yeah. We, um, which do we still need? Study? The only thing we can do is make the taxpayers happy by posting the roads where they want to post them if we can do it with the state. The study has two parts. One is, is the data collected on that road segment, right. and then one is the traffic study itself. The traffic study, if the data is there, takes about a half hour. The only studies we have now are the Trombley Hill, Garfield, and Centerville by the fire station. Those are the studies and the data are all done. The other list includes Mori Road, some dead end roads, which I know never have had a traffic study on. Uh, oh, Sterling View, same thing, you know. So we could uh, talk to regional planning about their database, see what they have. They might have some more to add on to the list of 10. So we have three, where are the other seven? We can start to knock down that list. If there's a way to do it on these dead end roads that doesn't include the speed study, you know, like the yeah. 85th percentile, um, then maybe that's how we accelerate these other roads that are as thorough. The class two roads, your through roads, I definitely do have a full study on that. Yeah. But some of the side roads that are dead ends or Sterling View or Mori Road, I think we could get away with some traffic, modified traffic study on those if you will, and get that documented and why we did it and that kind of stuff to accelerate this. So if you do, if you give the two weeks, at least two weeks for Mark and I to get the cost tuned up a little bit better based on this new road list, which I think, let's, let's be honest, I'm enforcement and I'm, I'm not going to lead into saying wrong things, but we're not going to have a cop enforcing the road that he was talking about grading last week. I know, I know what one tell it, but there, there is, there is a lot of roads that we need to focus on that for the enforcement side. And you know, like on the, on the install, we prioritize the installs and that all together. Um, I know what one town did. You probably all know the same town. They enforced the speed limits in that town by a constable, but you have to spend the money to get the constable set up. And you know, Island Pond had a constable there, twenty-four. Seven, and he was hammering people. The name was Tim. Huh? The name was Tim. You remember that? <laughs> so, but that is what if no, that chair wanted to do. Right. That's the way you could enforce it. That is because the, Roger Marco does not know, have the time. Susan's point about money is is pairs with that issue. Uh -huh. If you had the extra uh -huh. money. No, I mean, I know I was involved in a lot of that. And okay, I, so let me just come back. I'm, I'm. I have an update speed, for you. My two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, two weeks. Okay. Like it, well, yeah. Two, but are we going to add McKinstry Hill or not? That's my question. Yeah, yeah. that's a good. One. Yeah, it's a yeah, that's a thirty-five gravel type thing. Yeah. yeah. North High Park Road, those two sections. Yeah. Area yeah. Three being the shortest section. And I think that was. It, Who's our constable in Hyde Park? I don't even remember. You, we don't have uh, maybe changing crossroads to 25. You don't have yeah, Jones Road on here. Which one? Jones Road. It's a through road. I'm trying to just think of the roads that like people like, you know. Yeah. Whitaker Barn, Brian. Cooper Hill Road there. Section of that. If you look at the roads that aren't on the list. Oh, I know. Brook Road. Uh, I think Longmore was on one of them. Brook Road, I Longmore, thought I saw that. Longmore's on here. Brook Road's on here. Well, that's something pick up in the computer. Why don't you, for the next meeting with these added, figure out how many signs we're talking? Yeah. <clears throat> and then We'll prioritize it. You got to prioritize because you're not enough time. Exactly. I think I just said that. That's what I'm saying. It's one priority. You know, and that's what you're going to do. We can everything. No, yeah. no. But at least we come to it's done and then it's in order and then if people have questions or something. Here's where we're here. Yeah, we can post on the website and say, here's what we're headed to. Yeah. Then you take what you want for the ordinance part. Keep working the list down. Would it be more cost effective to do 
I think Matt brought it up to originally 35, 45. Um, it's too costly to put all the signs up in one year. That would it be easier to inform the town people by either newsletter, the transcript, or social right. media that these speed limit adjustments have been made are going to be in place effective next day. Um, and you yeah. basically be enforcing the speed limits. Not like you are right now. Yeah, you know, I think there's going to be a big difference right, there. Right now, right. Uh, I, I like I that it's idea. Not, anything not posted, it's good. That's a state law, anything. Right. No, that's, I'm, I'm just saying that. That's state law. Uh, would it be easier for the select board and the town to enforce it if you did, uh, you know, uh, 35 on dirt roads, 45 on paved roads? And signs will be going up as they come in, but the uh, time uh, effect, effective time is going to be January 1st or yeah, 1st or whatever date you choose. But, uh, May of next year. The May of next year. Because I'm just saying yeah, this winter could be busy. I'm just <laughs> saying that, you know, would that be easier? to uh, get the word out to the, the towns townspeople via that route versus waiting for individual signs to be put up when wait what Mark said it's going to take well you're still least, having to think I think at least swallowed on the battle roll. Uh, having people pay attention to it by just telling them it's 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 ultimately it's going to come to the signs going up. But I guess that's do we I personally, I I like the idea of thirty five forty five because it's simple. Okay, so yeah. when I go flying forty five by the fire station, I'm sure those people on that road are going to be happy. No, that would be thirty five. Why? It's pavement. No, it should be thirty five. Right. That's <laughs> 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 just going to say it's yeah. not going to work. Sterling View. Let's go. Fit, let's go forty five through Sterling View. It's paved. Right. I don't think that's such a great idea. <laughs> well, or you do accept where other put then that's what the yeah the numbers number. of the signs are. Yeah. Right. Posted. And because of course you could stick with theory going out past the fire station is a village road, so they'd like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. People have been happy it's been closed. Oh yes, they have been, except for me on the other side. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I guess I just I've seen us push things through. So there's been two weeks, but there's been a lot of progress. I want to continue with the progress. And me personally, I just want to make sure we put up two signs. We might put up two signs and within two weeks, four people were staring at us and three emails were posted about those signs. What's going to happen when we put up 85 signs throughout the town? I mean, I just don't, I, I want to make sure that we have a thorough if he's been working on it since 1978 and I've been on this board now for a year and a half, we've been working on it for three months. That's a lot of progress in three months. So if, if we hold that progress in three months, we'd have this in by May next year. <laughs> and hopefully it'll still be alive. It's a tough situation, but You've got to enforce it, and, and Rogers just don't have the time to enforce it. Well, right, and, and, and you've got something that can be enforced. That's the... I mean, that's I see the... What, what would be the cost of a cop? Well, I have absolutely no idea. Versus... I think we got it. I think what we pay... Uh, uh, Roger. Roger. Well, you're not taking anything away from that because you don't want less service. If somebody no. gets murdered or they're issuing them down or there's drug enforcement, you don't want less service from the from the sheriff's department. You know, you who who is our constable? We always have a constable. David. All oh, right, Dave Connor. Right. Let's go back to our and enforce speed <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next we are. We had to look at a vehicle, everything. It, I, I just right. No, we're not. I'm not. 
let's get through this year's budget. Before I'm going to say our, our employment budget's budget. already been added to enough. Right. <laughs> Okay, so what do we need to have? What's everybody's understanding of what we need to have by next meeting? I don't know if we have made a decision. <laughs> well, we know we need to know how many <laughs> signs we have. Right. right. So the, the road list was the one I read, plus right. the couple changes in Ferry, the Northside yeah, Park. Right. And then at the very end, you started ripping off like Jones, Grimes, Longmore Hill as well, which are. Um, I, I would not add all those. Or all so the roads. Roads. Right. Well, we and we we can put them on the list, but just say, hey, you know, we're not, we're not going to do no change right now, you know, or something to that effect. We put a priority to this right now. I I, I just don't know. How about we get a, a list on this? List. I was just going right. to say that. We'll start with the list we have. Then. Exactly. There you go. Then start a new list of all the other roads. Yeah, there's other future that we can do next. Right. Yeah. There's 40, 45, 40, yeah, 40, 40, 40 other roads. Are we adding uh, McKinsey Street Hill, Northhead Park, and Ferry, and Garfield Cross? And LCPC and don't have a And then no others? Person doing that now? No, or? we're just going by this list. Just this only? Yes. Ron, what? LCPC don't have a person doing that. They usually like have a college kid or something. They, they, they haven't was... had the same person doing it. Every year they change and they can do... Yeah. They did three or four for us already this yeah. year. Uh, they have a good... Uh, history in their computer for the old ones which I don't have and then we can ask for a special fall one that's what I'll do to see if we can add some more this fall but then they shut down for plows yeah, but eventually when they don't go up anymore so but they don't they have somebody on staff but they're shared person now they don't have a dedicated traffic person part of the budget issue they have over there get the GPS every Okay. You set? We'll we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> oh. Okay. Can uh we make it clear as to what we're doing? Because okay. we've gone in circles. So we have decided that we are going to have Ron and Mark get signage for the list that's on this yeah. piece of paper, nothing no added as of yet for the next meeting. Right. Right. Then we're gonna decide what we're gonna do. I like that idea. Yes. And we're gonna start a new list of roads that we like list already started other ideas. of other plans. Which we're not gonna really work on right now. Perfect. Okay. We're gonna have it. We're gonna have it ready to go if you guys okay. go on. All right. Road Commissioner job description with Mark Frank. Can you see those emails I've been sending, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. We're just approving this. Yes, Mark's was new description. Right. You know the people's job description to understand why they're trying. Right. Are you salary non exempt now? No. No. You're hourly. Out. Yeah. So he still keeps track of his time. Yeah. Yes. His salary for forty, and then so. Okay. You, why would you, it be hourly? No, it's an hourly, not exempt now. As a worker, uh, this job starts to push him into the supervisory more. So a lot of times when you have that mix, you end up saying, look, we're going to have you do supervisory. You might have you run here. You might be meeting with town administrator. You might be working with your crew. You might be at training. You start to mix up his sort of the core eight hour work with the crew a little bit. Plus you have them meetings, you know, administrative type stuff. So you say, when you get to 40, 
you know, we're going to expect you to work 40 hours a week and you're going to get the same paycheck every week for that 40. You don't have to keep track of all those hours here, there, everywhere. Gotcha. Over the seven days. But if you get to 40, which means some little notepad of just memory, memory tool, anything over 40 would, would pay you overtime. Okay. So that's how that would work. It's, it's a different style. <laughs> if there was a regular schedule, which is a lot of the summer hours, summer work season, then mm -hmm. you kind of get close to the 40 a lot of times, then Mark would be freed up from plugging in and out of time every day. That's the only, that's the only real change. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where eventually you get to a superintendent supervisor. They don't report any time, but they work 40, 50, 60. Right. You know, that, so we're in that in between. Gotcha. So it's really a comfort level for the worker. Gives them the option of taking off a task, I guess, because they're a little more flexible. They're not as rigid as the group. Okay. But Mark may be 60%, 70%, 80% working with the crew. So we're not close to that 50-50 deal. Once you get 55, 60% administrative, then you, you can, you talents have a lot of choices that you can put them on salary at that point. But the worker has some rights when they're primarily labor. We can't force them on salary when yeah. they're primarily labor. Right. I think Mark doesn't probably, I don't even know if the mix is right now, but he does it all right now. So I don't know if the mix is, but. What would you say that he says, Mark? 85, 15? Um, <laughs> but I don't I think I like I like my hours just because I know at the end of the day like I did that. I, I feel fair for back then I feel fair for myself. I don't know like the word salary I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I like to talk to some other people around me doing mm -hmm. pros and cons for myself. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we when we talked last week about this, the, the, the position wasn't going to change in my agreement, but, or my understanding was you just more, it was more you're taking the phone right. calls. So we're entering a full road commissioner. He's getting away from through. I, I I don't I don't know that I'm remember no. that. That's not the intent. It's just, okay. that, right. that, right. it's right. just recognize right. another way to deal with that in between person. Yeah. I don't know how many road commissioners. I suppose if a road commissioner was totally 100% administrative, then there would be a, more of that supervisory exempt right. from overtime. For sure. You know, right. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. But when you're in the in-between worlds, a lot of towns will keep that person on non-exempt, pay the overtime, and have a report just like the rest of the group. So that, that's mm -hmm. what he's doing now. Right. Yeah. And that is an automatic... Okay. You're, you're used to doing that it's on it's on record when you show up when you leave all that stuff so that's no no change at that point and as far as it, the same as you know ken alexander was a commissioner for the last 10 years he was working for him in right. uh, kind of as far as the job description for the same that it has been for me yeah he, he used his salary when he shouldn't have so even you know, there's some reporting of hours that were not reported potentially for the prior foreman, you know. Oh, so he was salary. No, he no, was, he, he was using his non-reporting like he was a salary when he should have been doing hours. Gotcha. gotcha. As a donation, love the town type of thing, which mm -hmm. isn't really what no employers are supposed to encourage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, if you're working, you're working, you report your hours <laughs> at the end of it. You know, it's very simple, okay. straightforward. Right, right. You need to be paid. For so, Mark's time. concern for salary that's the risk. You go on salary, and all of a sudden, you're not tracking your hours and you're doing 50, and you should have got 10 hours of overtime, but you, you biffed it because you're not a good paper to work. Right. So, Mark's new job or Employee title is road commissioner slash road foreman. Yeah. Yeah. And then no change of pay. Great save the pay. No, because there's actually no change in his job. No change in his job. No, it's to what he's been doing right along. The, the, this is more just because Ron's retiring, so a little bit more weight off of what Ron's role was more into our town. Yeah. One less phone call. Like before that way was last week. Basically, there's right now they call Ron and they but yeah, I think the I think the other benefit which we talked about the last meeting. A lot of times we had well, last meeting was a good example. We had people pop in 
that had a road question. Normally you'd say, can we get Mark or we'll talk to Mark next week and then that's hanging for two weeks before it goes back to you. Right. So Mark's available at the meeting or on that on the monitor there. Issues that do pop up can be resolved almost almost immediately if he's here with the information. Yeah. So having that more uh so road road commissioner, road foreman presence is is a is a benefit. Yeah, yeah I agree. That, that's that was the one selling point for me is not we're not paying another salary for a man to be accepting phone calls and then that person has to coordinate with Mark Mark. Yeah, all that has, all that and, stuff. Right. That that's the second part of it for sure. Right. Day to day. And that's what happens when Mark's not here for a meeting. One of us ends up calling Mark and then Mark calls and we just so yeah. we just said no, we'll just get rid of all of that. So I guess we're not going to approve this yet because Mark. You you could to. approve it with the you know, the way it is now, which is the uh, salary, or you can change out and delete that salary and just put non-exempt position. So there's one edit yeah. to it. Yeah, and then yeah. we can always go to back yeah. later if you want yeah. to change it later. Okay, and, and I'm just throwing this out there. Should we throw this in a probational period to like see if Mark three months from now Mark says I fucking hate this she's not a good school I hate this and we're not burning him out to this should we put a probationary on it uh, if there's a change in job title Mark is does uh, do a letter of hire amendments because this file is 2016 yeah road form it so he needs some new letter basically it's, up, the it's almost like a promotion or change of job duty uh, letter mm -hmm. so in, in that letter you could decide to have a 30 day, 90 day, I don't 90 days is our standard probation if you wanted to, or just, or you have to say, but right. there is no probation. Because like last week, one of the things I, I brought up, like right now, I don't want to be the sounding board for all the problems with Mark's, you know, we're, we're still a team here. Mark's going to still report to us. It's still going to work that way. But Mark changed position and all of a sudden we're getting a bunch of people in here. I don't think this is going to happen, but just. Then we say, hey, what's going on? Right, so it's not working. Yes. Yeah. The relationship's good. I just should keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that letter typically has a sentence about whether it, it's there, whether the probation's there or not. So, Mark, you'd rather have it not be salaried. Just keep I yeah. all the way. Before I did that, I had to talk to some channel yeah. down there. Doing that. Right. There's different ways. Right. Right. You yeah, can so you sort of make so, the Yeah. I mean, we're the way you sort of keep track of the 40 hours, but you don't keep track of the 30 hours and then what's the only thing, as opposed to just keeping track of work. Talking about a two step process. So tonight is the job description only, and you, you can amend that later if you take it off with non exempt on there tonight and just approve it as non exempt. So right. that would be your motion. Then the letter of hire, re of hire, promotion, job duty yeah, adjustment right. can be done on the 24th. And that will, that will incorporate this right. Right. new right. job description. So it'll be a two step process you're talking about. And that's where we would put the probationary yeah. period in. Is that on, the on the 24th. On the 24th. You look right. at those conditions. Okay. Right. Well, then I'll make a motion to approve the new job description for the road commissioner, road foreman. Um, but we are going to take out the word salaried. Fall under the May 1st deadline, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Need a second? I'll send it. Okay. Got a second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Oh, thank God that was easier to speak. <laughs> uh, Centerville and Brook Road culvert replacements updates. What do you want to know? <laughs> Ron is getting really tired of me. Water we sending him. <laughs> I'm going to start sending him to Mark, too. What did they pay them that day? Brook Road cold? is going well. <laughs> Brook Road is going well. That's Water's running down him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They like, yeah, we I get questions almost every day. We finally got an we finally got an email today from the consultant or sorry from the engineer consultant and a schedule for Friday for paving. And I told him the road needs to open up too. 
you know, it's, it's you know, contractor language, bolting up the road might require them to uh, cone or mark the edges of the road because there's guardrail that's not uh, the guardrail's not what's called yet. So we have to be careful have with the that. barrier because we cannot easily leave it that way. I don't know what the right thing is. We we've gotten weird responses from our engineer before about guardrail and safety and compliance. So I don't know exactly what the plan is for that or what the schedule is for the guardrail. That is a we we didn't hold them to a schedule in the contract, right? We didn't say you have a mandatory open date. Not an open date. The completion of the contract is October 15th, Sunday. Is there LDs after that? Do we hold LDs in our contract? Uh, we held how, how what? Sorry. Liquidated damages. No. Don't well, worry about it. slide went up there. But that was a question I had last week. I pulled it. I could read that. Did you say there was something, an issue with somebody going down there or something? In the last meeting or something, I missed it. I don't know. Going where? Going where? Down to the site or something? Because there was somebody at the site or something. I missed that whole last meeting and I yeah. wanted to go back and knock what you said. Because I was. You were here. It was just I was, I was here. <laughs> I was thinking we should meet. Remember, there was a point where he's like, well, after you get the you know, two select board members go down to a job site, it's something that happened now. I, that like blew right over my head. Oh, that was your time about the road commissioner. Yeah, Correct. that was the road commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well that's like, it. but I hey. thought it was in relation to that job. Oh, you no. talked about it. it, it that's why I was asking. Oh, yeah, that was a previous time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned a previous time, so I thought it was that job, and I'm like, I don't. I mean, right. The same thing. You've been up that, since four thirty, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was the right. Yeah, okay. That was the day. Yeah, right, that was right, the day. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. he had been up yeah. at four thirty, and he was you know, hovering over this chair. You got it. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in theory, it'll be paid this way. Only for unpaid wages and your. Sub consultants met. Oh. All right. Liquidate damages. Only if he doesn't pay his subs. If he doesn't pay his subs. Okay. Well, we're not worried about it. But don't we have to? Can they hit latch again? Doesn't that say they're in motion with this? Yeah. In order to. Oh, yeah. That's right. I was just going to change that's right. Too. That's, right. that's right. They did. So it changed. I that. forgot. I already did that. Oh, I was like, <laughs> that's just that's right. That. that's right. They got this call. They said they hit latch again. Then we're not going to have everybody stop. <laughs> okay. I said, no, don't stop. Change it. Can you tell us right. about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a ledge again. Well, so we, have a, we have a process with change orders, and I we first found out about it, and Ron and the engineer did this sort of a repeat of Centerville, and Ron Dove. Rush, rush. So we asked him, Ron, to sketch out where, and this is for FEMA purposes too, because this is a change order request that we have to knock off the requirements for FEMA, which would need a justification for the change order, a sketch of where the ledge was found. So that delayed it. Ron said, oh, it's going to cost X dollars and we need approval to move forward in a $7,500 ad. And the engineer has to review it. The contractor has to draw it up, has to make quantities, estimate the price. The engineer has to make sure that's a reasonable cost. All those things have to be done. So today we got an email from Watershed Consulting, which had the, all the information we needed, which is summarized by saying lead was unforeseen and impacted design invert elevations for the culvert. The contractor will need to remove the ledge and set the culvert according to the plan specifications. Hammering the ledge was considered, but de but determined to be more costly alternative to blasting. So the maximum not to exceed is seventy five hundred dollars, which goes with last uh, change order one. So Brook Road, just to give you a summary of this whole project. So Brook Road itself was awarded at $332,000, uh, no change in number one, because that applied to Centerville. So with this change, the new cost is 339500 Centerville Road was awarded at 408000 and that was a total contract award of 740000 
Now, Colbert for Centerville is 409590 and the total contract is 749090 So that is the current story. Is that 409? This is uh, Centerville's new numbers, 40959. Sorry, I'm going to the total of the group. Seven, well, 750. Yeah, yeah. 750. Yeah, so that, uh, the engineer has approved that, the contractor has submitted it, and now the town needs to accept that. <laughs> That could be a motion to accept a new number. I will we'll make a motion to accept the new numbers, including the change orders for Brook Road and Centerville Road. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. The camel. Come on up. <laughs> Would you like to know? So you have, you have lots of information in the packet. It's your information. Yeah, if you provide it with the images. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Thank, Thank you. You know, you'll stay on us. <laughs> All right. So, folks, what do we want to do? What should we do? Look, that was how we had to use the That's a nice thing. It is. And the good thing about these is that they can be customizable. That is just one of the buildings that we offer. Um, I mean, if you want to look at the power, I mean, you know, I'm sure you can get out of the but but um, yeah. Really, you should have something um, that looks like that. You need fencing around, not just for the small runs. Um, how much you want to do that as your guys' discretion, whatever. Uh, but if you run more deep, you should probably have a lot. A small, obviously, a big lot. Where, where, where are we going? Well, that's <laughs> it's for us to decide. Really, the only feedback, like I had talked to, I have a lot of clients that live in Hector that you know they come to see me usually. Um, just word of mouth, like talking with them because they were like, hey, here you are. Oh, good. Oh, it's not good. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice. And uh, pretty much the general idea was everybody wanted it out of town, which obviously is a given. And somewhere, um, that's easy to access. I was like, okay, that, that makes sense. And knowing the option, well, maybe the options was somewhere in Garfield, and then maybe something was said about up here. That was kind of scary, right? Oh, yeah, that's not probably yeah. Yeah, Okay. Um, you have a lot of houses close to that. You don't realize it until you're right there. until you're on the other side. Okay. So pretty much everybody after they knew that. They were like, that Garfield seems nice. It's always been a Garfield anyway. Why not we just put it over there in Garfield? Like, yep, that makes sense. So that's just where you can help me. But I like to see it up there. Yeah, because it's a great location. It's out of town. <laughs> There's no, you know, not a lot of people that live near it. Right, right. You're not going to have to. So, so looking as you run to do this, you got to get it set up. Give me a ballpark. 
have you thought of what the cost is? Well, yeah. this is the other great thing about these buildings, depending on how many you know spaces we want in there, the price fluctuates. Mm -hmm. So if you guys decide you want a six dog building, mm -hmm. there you go. But then you can customize it to if you want uh like board and bat pick trim, you want to skin. You can do the whole shebang, the whole breakdown sheet. There's a good spreadsheet in here, shows all the costs. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, but then you've got to get it set up. Set up, they but deliver. No, they deliver, but you still need the water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, right. But That's everything, the piece, like, right. that building is finished. Right, so that's what it gets you. So yeah. you, need a, you need a pad, you need to be able to deal with wastewater. Right. You got to have water, you got to have electricity. Right. Which the good thing is, is that there are plenty of people um, that me and the merger people that I've been working with that are willing to chip in and help. We just need to build it. Because Dean was trying to work with Justice for Dogs because they were also, you know, outstanding in public health. Um, okay. On um, Alapulka, like doing a 99 release with Justice for Dogs for a piece of land, but they don't really have a spot in Wolka. So they talked about transfer station, uh, putting, putting a building up at the transfer station, but that one hurts, they can't have waste water. Um, yeah. yeah, so they're kind of in the boat too. Yeah. So it, did we, I can't remember. So you're talking I guess about the this. running water up the baseball field, right? Would we buy water? Oh, that's what we said, or all these. Yeah. And the good news is I'm looking for the cover of power. I know. I shared it. Other, other than other than you voted to put a big sign there that says no dogs allowed. Right. Down to the corner. <laughs> As you go into the gate. Yeah. That's that that there would be you you would you would have to move that sign again. Yeah, 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 we have to move it up move it up yeah. in the fields. Yeah. I don't I think we can deal with that. Now here here's the Let's see. We know Johnson is in the same. Yeah. Well, yeah. Same same same. I know. Have you heard anything water. from Cambridge? Well, yeah, we've been we've been we've been reaching out to a lot of people. Right. Hang on, just a second. Let me get. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Were we considering sharing? Yes, we were. Right. So Cambridge was on board for a county-wide thing. Okay. Wow. That's that's my only idea. Okay. Jim Harris is running power. You missed that last week. Jim Harris is running power to our town. They, they don't want to get a letter in their town. Well, so that would be easy enough. Okay, you guys, let me. Wait, 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 wait a second. Need the gentleman to. Well, wait just a second, please. Okay. And just so you know, when when we have those side conversations, it really messes up recording and what people can hear. We were trying to just not make sure the option was working. <laughs> let, let us all know that. Right. Okay. Johnson and conversations with Johnson. Um, Beth is, you know, sorry, well, it's time to get the liability and who's in and, and worried about it. Um, and I think, I think Johnson would probably be happy to come in on, on a countywide thing, but they're a little overwhelmed with flooding and a variety of other issues that they're dealing with right now. So I don't think they have any energy and Ron, had, we started just looping everybody in so that they get all the emails and they know what they're doing. I think to make this happen, and I think because we do have potentially a very good site, I think we can go to some private people that would help come up with the money to deal with the pad and water and taking care of all of that. I think if we take the lead and figure out, go with a, not just take care of Hydro Park, but think about it as a countywide thing, um, and then when people, they, they we can either charge them more daily rate when they come in to help recoup the cost, or they can buy in, we can figure out, sort of as we're figuring out with the sector, the local, you know, the, the uh, an interlocal agency, we're, we're, we're developing a good a good framework with the assessor can here and getting towns to sign on to something together. But I think it's going to take us to be, I think we're in the best spot to take the lead on it. Okay. How many dogs do you think can hold? Could, could well, how big do you want to get? So if you look at, she got the, yeah, you got. Are you the, talking about the model kennels or the? No, the model kennels. The model kennels. Yeah. 50 to oh, 60. Oh, what was that big in there? Yes. Oh, yeah. 
They have a summer wing. To be honest, how many was in there ever? And I know you have pens, and I know like yeah. So average. average. Okay. If you do the whole Lamont County, you're definitely going to have things bigger. Well, necessarily. Stowe. No, no Stowe. Marshall. We don't have to worry about Marshall so much right now because as of right now, the kennels are still accepting Marshall dogs on a just like okay. you know same basis as they apply to the kennels. Mm -hmm. So I mean, are they? Yeah, we're coming to do more shorts. No, yeah, they're but in. it's a limbo thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but as much as we pick up dogs, it comes in rushes. I would say at one given time, if all the towns that are in need of a spot, you would need probably two to three per town. Spots? Yeah. Oh. You're looking at 12. I was thinking. It's not that bad. But in the long run, if and hell is working kind of the same as the guns. I've had many talks with the and hell in recent weeks since our last meeting. Their policy is the same as the town. Mm -hmm. They're not willing to help take strays yep. because they don't have any space. Yep. Yep. So in the long run, you should ideally think, hey, this is our problem now in space, but in the long run, you should turn it more into a county pound type shelter thing in the long run, which is not our problem right now, but keep that in the back of your mind. We could start with 12. Right. And again, the way these work, depending, we can, you know, we right. can always add a smaller one. Exactly. Right. That's what's nice about that. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you don't know. Answer your question. Yeah. We may be picked up on average through their 30 to 40 nights a year, you said? Yeah. Somewhere there. On a 10 day hold. If it's just pickups here and there, it, it varies. Yeah, it'd be really short, yeah. overnight type stuff. It's a lot of them. Quarantine for really? 10 days, you don't have much of that. Uh, I I don't know. I can't answer that question for you. For me, because I haven't personally brought one there. I brought one there for 10 day 14, that was it. But that was a different situation. Um, before that, that would be a wrong question on how many dogs were brought in quarantine. Uh, um, I think, you know, on an average year, that's where that's where I was getting the 30 to 40. You have a lot of short time visitors, but there's always two right. or three dogs that have to do the whole thing. Yeah. And those are the ones where you don't let the dog home. It's maybe rabies, suspicious because it hit somebody. Those are mandatory holds yeah. somewhere. Right. right. And we've been lucky for the last month and a half now that we haven't had a mandatory hold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what we'd actually do. I mean, I, we beg model kennel for one space for 10 days because of that. Okay, I don't see yeah. So anyway, that you know the, the progress of getting this thing going, obviously the clock's ticking on wires. So if there's going to be some kind of plan, there's probably permitting to deal with. Right. You know, we're not exempt from permitting. Not to mention we're mandated to have a space. So yeah. um, when if your dog is a stray and you technically can charge for that. Mm -hmm. And I remember the last time you were here we said the charge for or it's a small fee or something. Yeah. Could we look at changing that to yes. bring yes. it up with yeah. you and yeah. 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 dogs and all that stuff? Yeah, so ten percent. Yeah, please raise the rates. Yeah. ten dollars a day, not enough. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You have real cost to back into that, so yeah. you feel good about it, even yeah. if it takes a couple of years to pay back. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 And the town's buying in should have a a fair deal. Could we look at which is not as zero. What? Pardon? That's sure what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> unexpected. Yeah, and, right. and and obviously yeah. to me. Yeah, and and we're ending up. Well, see what other towns have done too, but they they can figure out part of their buying if they want to. Yeah. But I right. figure it, it, it'll be involved now. Do we accept their dogs? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you just charge. You charge, charge them. Dogs. You charge them. The towns or the uh, the the town. Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah, but then it's literally, it, literally you charge both. You would charge the town, say $10 for their a use, day, for their then you use. charge the person $20 a day for their dog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Technically, Absolutely. that makes the most sense. Yeah, I agree. The town needs to pay for the space. Right. The person needs to pay for the hold of the dog. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the homeless dogs go to the shelter. Yes, on certain conditions. And Cal has to evaluate them first. And if they deem the dog not fit to go into their space, then we have a dog that we can do with it. We can't euthanize it. We're no pill state. The best around here won't do that unless it's a behavioral aggression, like a fit in some way. Right. But that, that's where we end up with a dog that sustains. Where you a dog, you know, in the town. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, you can think about it longer, right? Yeah. Mm. Right, because you're once in a while you're going to have a dog that's going to be going to take a while to place, but you haven't had many of them have your own. Huh. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't run any cow and cow. Where what about the fourth, right? And how well, but they're usually going to get picked up by the town, yes, they're a town dog in the beginning, correct? So <laughs> you talk to them. I can I can read off a spiel from you from NCAL. Um and we'll be like, why are we donating money to them every year at town, you know, meeting time? But <laughs> it's the um let's see here. That's right. Uh NCAL is not able to accept animals that have been surrendered to towns, ACOs. We can accept strays when we have space and if they pass the temperament test. Owners that wish to surrender their pet need to follow the proper channels by reaching out to us directly and follow our intake process to determine if their pet meets adoption criteria. When this process is bypassed and owners surrender to town for ACO, it's critical information in helping us place the pet. We are in the process of reviewing our stray intake policy since the loyal kennels have stopped taking strays, but our owner surrender policy will be remaining the same. If we go to their website, it's listed in the drop down tab. It's very similar to the if the owners of these dogs have not ready, they can reach out to us to schedule a temperament evaluation. Um, if owners have been in contact with us and we have declined their surrender request due to the dog not meeting our adoption criteria, then it is the owner's responsibility to find alternative outcomes for the pet. Going forward, um, I recommend that the town and ACOs direct people wishing to surrender their pet to contact ANCO on their own. This is a hardship for the owner of the pet, or this is a cruelty case in which the police or warden service are legally investigating. We would ask that the towns contact us before obtaining ownership of the pet, and we will try to work with the family, the town, or police to find a viable solution, whether that is at ANCO or elsewhere. If the town or ACO chooses to accept ownership of surrendered pets without involving ANCO for her, the town is then responsible for finding placement for the surrender pet elsewhere. And then it just goes on to say, uh, you can contact them first um, with uh, any stray dog that comes in. So if we pick up a stray and we can't find the owner in a 10-day hold, if we don't contact NCAL, as soon as we picked up that dog, we can let them know, hey, we have this dog in hold, we don't know where the owner is, blah, 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 we'll let you know when it stays over. Then we have to take the NCAL for the temperament test. Does it pass? It comes back to us. Yeah. Oh. See what I mean? So it can get sticky, and we want to make sure we have space for those dogs. Because NCAL literally told, I took in a town surrender. I mean, she did back in June. I still have that town surrender in my care at my home. Because I can't take it anywhere because boxes are full. NCAL won't take it. But she didn't pass their template oh. test. Well, I can tell you that it takes. She's still in your home. She's probably all right. I, yeah, I, uh, I have enough dogs in my own home, <laughs> but she she's a good girl. Think of it this way: it takes three days for a dog to decompress. That's been surrendered. Three weeks to start to know a routine, a new routine, and three months to start to feel comfortable in this new environment. So, can you imagine bringing a dog to Cal after? 10 day hold, of course it's going to be yeah, right. in a, know, not, not having a particularly good temperament. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, both so, in the building. If you're talking um, the fields, where would you put it on the fields? Yeah. Don't look at me. Baseball field? Don't look at me. Okay. Well, well that's a changing <laughs> flow up. Right there. as you go through the gate right there on the left. Okay. That's where I'm just throwing that out on the table. I mean, to help how close it is. I would I would just right there. Strongly, I would strongly start looking at 
At your cemetery right there. There's a cemetery, but I would yeah. look at you. I would look, at, you. I would look at your future because Whoa. that's where he's headed with his pit. His pit's headed there. So it's, it's yeah, but he's starting from the other end, working his way back because you right. talked to him about that. Yeah, yeah but that's uh, 20, 10, 15 years. So I don't right. know okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. But, back, but, yeah, but, and this is going to be a portal. Yeah, right. This is going to so, be. Yeah, well, right. I, um, yeah. You... But what about that's town land. We have no problem with land. You've got right, 15 you years or 20 right. years to, right. to figure this out after that. And you then 20 years will go by. Really space. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to need a fence. I mean, yeah. yeah, right. So that, that's a cost. Right, right. I would put it all together because I'm yeah, envisioning I'm a need to step back. A little bit. Right, say, and so you're you're, come up, here's you're, what you're rapidly to heading watch. into a long, expensive project, two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand dollar type thing, which can be worked back with grants and planning right. and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. The interim thing, which is the high priority need, is a different project. That is, where's the water? Where's the electric? We're going to put a box on that thing anywhere at the pavilions at the ball fields. So that the dog can be heated and cooled while we have a one or two night stay. Right. That's the immediate need. And that might be a truly portable Bastille box that's set up for one dog. You know, if you get a 10 by 20 little something that has an air conditioner unit on it, like in a construction yard, and that goes on, it goes right on the ball fields property and it's all locked and secured. I don't have a constant power area. You're supposed to. I did. I did. I mean, <laughs> no, I did. I know. It's slow. It's a yes. But, yeah. but you that can't. has a generator. It's, you said to have it up like in the ball field. To, like this one or Where, wherever this water and power right away would be the key. Right. The thing. Well, for for temporary. Wait, wait, wait. We need one towards the front. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 You keep up with it. <laughs> you need a bell. Yeah. 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 We're talking. Yeah, I am. You're going to start hitting people with my cane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I don't. I don't. I don't see how the short term. I don't really see how you construct that with. I'm just not seeing how you. No, it's built already. It, there are units that are heated and cooled for construction yards that you roll in, you park, and then you take it away later with no infrastructure tied to it other than yeah. extension cords and a water hose or something like that. But you. They need that yesterday. Right. What you're talking about is a multi-step review permitting type thing. Yeah, yeah, right. So they're you're going too far so down that path. That's what I was get it done. Yeah, you get it done on a very temporary five thousand dollar budget, set it up, and that's done. And and, and that's through the cost of those things. The, the oh, they're they're rental units of you, you know, you know rent, you, I, I think office trailers out. I rent an office trailer from my work space. Right. Right. The same thing. Yeah. 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 Old space. I can rent them for somewhere between two thousand and five thousand. Same thing. Oh, I noticed Harvey's over in Morrisville has a bunch. You know that oil place? Oh, well, it's county or Harris oil or something like that. Mm -hmm. The county government. Yeah, but it's not well. it's not set up as a kennel. How is that? I mean, temporarily set up. You build you build a kennel into it and where one like those offices person, yeah, we have them. Yeah. You, you temporarily couple two by fours in a kennel, you build it inside it. As long as it's heated and it's already got three walls. Yeah. But it's okay. really it is an emergency temporary keep the right. dog away from other people because it's may have rabies kind of question and we right. don't have a stopping. So the more complicated, the more you end up flipping, that's why I was kind of stopping you guys, you flip into this bigger thing with everybody wanting an office space and so many 12, you know, that's a different. So what does somebody have to go around and talk to the other towns and see what they're willing to do? Um, yeah, that's, all that's, that's, a, that's wow. a process too. So for Hyde Park's problem, which is having a space, barn, basement, anything, it's all ball, ball fields. I don't, you know, that's what I want. I wanted to get past that because that is a need. Like tomorrow morning, we'll get that call. And camp is <clears throat> the end of summer, so campers are on sale right now. If you want to get rid of those, those have everything we need. Just tell up here when we need it. Take it down when we don't. Oh, right. Well, I mean, we, we had three to. Yeah. It's a high maintenance thing for the 
dog keeper. The, dogs, the dog has to get out all the time, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, Kristen can have one mouth. You better teach him a dog. It's in quarantine, and has to be really shouldn't be in a public space. Oh, yeah. true, man. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like creating new problems. What about the shed? Okay, I, was, so, I was just gonna say, what if we bought you a shed? Yeah, and then you know, the town just use it after we go. That's a five thousand dollar purchase. Is the recreation yeah. shed or any yeah. one dog shed? But well, we'd have to get heat. You but you gotta have running water. You said you should have running, but you know, if there was a closed hookup nearby, it wouldn't necessarily be a taboo thing. Not true. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all temporary. If we, bought, if, we, if we bought an on the shed and throw it up here in the parking lot for temporary, give her a little hose off this, and that mm -hmm. would be that would be enough to get her by. With heat, it's heat. It's heat. It's throw me up here for winter. Yeah, from now on, on be heat, not air conditioning. Right, right. So generator, heater. No, we want to get power. We get power. Yeah, throw yeah, throw, yeah, throw her. Can we put it at town? At a town there? Like for the winter, like temporary. It was temporary. I don't, I don't, I don't know whether unused spaces I'd have to. Right. And that would just be for us, not other things. Right. Yes. Yeah, just just really, yeah, we need just be so we think I can be Rob could tell you more because we are mandated to have a space. Mm -hmm. It's a legal thing for the court. Yes. Station. Yeah, we have to we have to have that option. That's why you, every year you name your kennel as part of the organizational meeting, that's part of that right. requirement. Right. Doesn't matter where it is. You yeah, have to have the same place. What do you want? Okay, so what do I want? And a temporary. Uh, hey, anything at this point. Yeah. Anything. Okay, you need something more definite than. Yeah, I'm putting down the papers that I need anything done. No, it's reached out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need something. So, what, what makes you guys make sense to sink the money? Is it better to rent one or to buy one of those? I don't if you're yeah, buying it, you're never gonna you said we could use it again, but are we really gonna use it again? Why well, with the floor on the bottom and then for a shed? Yeah. Or you can use it as part of the new kennel. Oh, right. Yeah. For storage. Yeah. For storage. Yeah. You know, for the future yeah. thing we're thinking. Or you can use that all fields they always need more. We could beat the auction in like that. <laughs> Small tents move easy to fix it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this one. It's not a problem. <laughs> right. I mean, because you said to rent is pretty pricey. I mean, if we could buy something that yeah. we can use, like so we're yeah. getting started with going to be exactly. I think probably realistically. I think it's probably going to be to the donations, which I'm guessing we could hire an electrician to throw an electrical right. baseboard unit in it for right. 600 bucks. Right. And we could run off this. Our electric bill might be an extra 100 bucks a month. Right. In the interim. We don't but yeah, that. just mind you, who knows, it might have been done three days a month. Exactly. Yeah. And it would be turned, not right. turned off, but right. turned right. down. Right. Well, actually, I mean, you could turn it off and turn it off. Right. Because you're not far in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Give me an orange one or let's go to Home Depot. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Arrange it. Send Mark down the trail. And, and because it's temporary, you don't need the cement or anything no. else, just one of them. Right, right. Yeah. So, again, we can put it on something so it's lovely, you know, so when dogs are like, stop moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's temporary, you got to rock a little bit. Yeah. So I guess it's finding a location here at the garage, maybe? Or? No, I think it's probably right here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, they move around a lot up there. I'm, I'm, Is there a hose here? Yeah. Yeah, there's an outdoor spigot yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's like it's really cold. But we can put it out here on the lawn in the back from really. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to run into that snow thing pretty quick. So. Yeah. Well, but our well, problem is solved solve the mantra. Right. It's temporary. Yeah. It'll get through winter. Yeah. My, oh, on, on a really interim basis, the shed could be dropped on the pavement in the corner. That's exactly right. what I'm saying. Exactly. Without, 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 it, without the dirt and all that. Yeah. Right. Right. And you can just plow around it. And, right. yeah. Yeah, like that. and if it gets too cold, what are we going to do? If it's going to be low, that heater won't keep up. The, the benefit of the uh, uh, Lamoille Woodcrafter type thing is they will they can prefabricate the inside yes. the way you want it too. So if you said, can, um, you, can you build a half wall here with a one door kind of thing, they can right. put that inside before it goes over the bridge. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, also these are Amish made. So maybe talking to these guys here. Yeah. 
especially the ones in like the actual yeah. yeah. they yeah. might be able to do it for the same price. It'll be less longer. Yeah. yeah. I haven't well, made gutters on. Yeah. 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 I have a meeting, yeah. have a meeting with yeah. them on Friday to do a 14 by 36 fully insulated electrified whatever building. So I can pass that quote along to you folks as well. Yeah. Quarter two. Okay. Doesn't have plumbing, but so so do we want to go ahead and authorize we'll do it with the I think we might do it with the Amishes when we do it. Then we can see potentially building let them know that that's where we're this is where we, this is where we're headed long term, but yeah. we gotta have a you know, we gotta do our permanent and pad and all sorts of other stuff, but this is a short term solution. Yep. Um, we definitely use ARPA money for this. I got no doubts at all. Because <laughs> we still have, we, we have a long list of people that want, right. you know, what, I mean, I this know is, we should probably see that next week. We want to do this. Purpose. This is a dual purpose, too. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So so let's make a vote to allow Allie to spend up to 7500 bucks on a temporary shed. Sure. That, that gives her, I mean, this shed over here was. Can I five grand? Uh, yeah, I get two thousand dollars to throw a little bit into the yeah, yeah. Where's this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you, if you're okay with it, have Allie yeah. talk to him about potentially doing. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna have some grant. Yeah. Gonna have her they can. They can do a product by whatever she's thinking. You know, maybe there's two spaces that can be created with right. the main entry. Right. Right. Yeah. Pretty right. simple. So that shed will actually do that almost because we have the main entry and then the entry side. Yeah. That's um, what I was thinking, it's right. almost the same thing for that. Getting yeah, close to that five thousand number. Yeah. yeah. And then we can take out the partitions later for the rec committee or yeah, whatever yeah, we are. Or the permanent or, facility yeah. wants to use. Right. Yeah. Ends up being part of the. You know, yeah. Okay, so then I'll okay. make a yeah. motion to allow Ali to go talk with what's the name? The Lucas Shed Company, <laughs> Town and Country, Town and Country, Country Sheds, um, with a budget up to seventy five hundred for the use of an interim kennel for the dog for Hyde Park for Hyde Park for Hyde Park. Right. Seventy-five will come out of the ARPA. Oh yes, we will be using ARPA. Yes. And we don't have to limit it to town pressure, right? Oh, true. Yeah. No, she can. Yeah, yeah. right. True. We're allowing her to make. No change. She yes. wants it. For Seventy-five hundred. I'm going to start over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start over. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, yeah. Trial room. So I'll make a motion to. Approve Ali to find a shed um, and talk to them about maybe pre building how you would like it for a budget up to 7500 using ARPA funds. And this is for the Hyde Park use for the dog kennel. Interim use, temporary use. I mean, well, that, that made no sense, but you're going to make me sound good. At least right now. <laughs> I'm just a little confused. So she's allowed to talk yeah. with them about things I've heard of. Purchase. Make a purchase. She can yeah. purchase. Oh, okay. Yes. Up to purchase. Right. Up to right. yeah. Up yeah. Custom purchase. Building. You're going to be up in more money. Oh, so, a lot more money. Yeah. This, is yeah. only a, this is only this we're going to go for grants for that. Yeah. 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 We start going for a bigger building with permanent use zone. We're chasing grants. Let's give it a even Even this one. I will set it. Yeah. I don't No. No. I don't think so. Yeah. 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 But it gives, it gives it gives a fluctuation. You okay. get the building five right. grand, you can put a little insulation. I mean, yeah. you have to ask them to insulate it. I don't right. you know, whatever you need. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, I think no, 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 the motion is yeah. maybe for next call. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Anybody opposed? No. Anybody understanding? They all voted for it. Do you have any questions? Yeah. But yeah, this is my first you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
Yeah, I bet you a couple of those big places with chicken bucks. Oh, we go. That's a good idea. We also get money. That'll, that'll be our winter project. Okay. Uh -huh. Vermont Community Foundation would be helpful too and they love doing those kind of projects. When you expand to county, it opens a lot more. Oh, yeah, that's yes. why folks interested. Okay. The interlocal agreement, fourth town cost considerations, continued discussion. Yeah, I wonder who that about. What not in my third. So I don't have do you have that budget that Duncan made? I have one in the truck that can go get it but what do you want to know? I can pull it up. The Hyde Park share. 24,000. 24,000. Cool. Yeah. So we met last week on Thursday, week before on Thursday, and discussed adding the town of Berkshire. That's fourth town. And there are concerns regarding the health insurance increases, um, retirement, et cetera, that um, Duncan Hastings from Johnson brought up. And so we have about 24000 for a cost expense for the town of Hyde Park, including the benefits. The town of Berkshire is ready to go either way. They didn't uh, <laughs> care what it costs. No, nope, they're just, <laughs> yep, happy. So they already made the motion. They made another motion to hire me on an individual basis. So while these towns are figuring out what they're going to do, the next steps, I can still work for them. And then, I got you. Yeah. Until it gets okay. So not hold me back any. Okay, so for the for the uh, twenty four, we get the pleasure of your attention as our assessor for eight hours a week. Mm -hmm. Right. No, on average. But yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's an average is out. Okay. So it's twenty four thousand for the year. Is that or in addition? For the year total. For the year total. Gotcha. Okay. Then he's separate doing the clerk and everything that he does. Yeah, oh, this is the assessor. This part. is just yeah. the assessor. Part. Okay. So, at twenty-four hours, the costs go down. Correct. More, more towns join. More towns. Yeah. yeah. So we're at twenty hours right now. Eight for Johnson, eight for Hyde Park, four for St. George, and then Berkshire adds us another four. So then that probation gets split up between the four towns versus the three. And then if you go up to 32, adding another eight hour town, which the town of Sheldon is interested in joining, if that be for the next grand list, okay. then the cost for the town decreases even more because there's no split splitting, yeah, right. yep. right. so. splitting all the benefits of you. Okay, got it. Yep. That's until okay. we have to give them a big pay raise, which is coming in March. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, right now, no continued or no motion anything like that. Just no, it's in the organization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super. Okay. okay. And as I say, and, and besides all that, remember now this is probably as long as you've been on the select board, Matt, trying to get this. Uh, a group of towns to go together to work on assessors because everybody's dealing with the same issue. And uh, originally we started the most times we wanted with four just because how thin it would split anybody, but then with the smaller towns. But it's what is really happening and everybody is watching, including the League of Cities and Towns, is if we have successfully, which I think we are succeeded in doing, creating an interlocal agreement if we can do it with an assessor, why not do it with a dog kennel? Why not do it with who knows what other sorts of things that you might, you know, towns might benefit from getting together and doing an, an agreement on and, and splitting a professional resource. So. Yeah, on the 27th, I went to town fair and we spoke on the interlocal agreement, Terry Savings and I did. Yeah. And okay. we got a lot of positive feedback. It was a great experience. Yeah, good. Yeah, a lot of times seem to be in favor of going this route, trying to figure out what the next steps are, how to transition out of like, not necessarily out of the listers, but just realizing that it's not really working for a lot of towns anymore. So, you know, they're in favor of this. Yeah, excellent. Good for you guys. 
Okay, the acceptance of the North Hyde Park River Shore and Sidewalk Scoping B Trans Study Grant of $48,000. We're going to get a sidewalk up there. Yeah. This is a uh, follow up on a 2016 report that looked at the whole area of North Hyde Park from 100C up to Heathrow, up to the guard facility up there. And they identified a bunch of different things the town could do within the state corridor. Of course, immediately the state's like, no, you're not touching our right away. You know, they want to be involved and support the towns through the planning process. Then you get to construction or the sidewalk crosswalk thing. And they, you know, 18 engineers get involved in the state and they things slow down. So the state of Vermont has changed their interest or, or funding conditions and permits process to elevate village centers with more flexibility than historically VTrans has been allowing. But you still have to go through this long process. So even though we had a scoping study in 2016, the state advised that, well, the seven years later, we need to incorporate these new policies and let's update the scoping study to and, and drill into two ready for construction segments and, and look at those which wasn't done the first time. The first one was more like a master plan. Um, this one is more of a which projects are going to be put forward and which ones the state will fund. So you always have an option, which Roland goes about from your village work over in Morristown, that you can always not take the grant. Loan. And you can potentially, if you have enough local resources and skills with your crew, you can do things on your own without the state money. So that's always an option. I would like to say that because... Mark has a certain threshold with what he can do with his five people and equipment, like a large culvert. He doesn't have enough equipment or, or manpower to actually shut the road down and do a whole project without delaying all the other work. And some of these projects end up the same way. Sidewalk improvements sometimes fall into that. So this is where we try to identify the project. You know, you said he don't have enough Power. He was using it as an example of like, like you guys be higher now, but from the center row one, you say like, like something big like that. Yeah, some projects Mark can do and some he can't. Something okay. someone has to get out. Well, he's he's talking about in the context of his annual work plan, sliding in a three month large culvert project, nothing else gets done. That's what he's saying. He, he can do so much on maintenance. But when you get into some of the construction projects, it takes away from the They're not construction people. So, right. you know, that's like their yeah. theme over there. Yeah. If you wanted to make them construction people, you almost have the backup people that do the regular maintenance. Which is exactly what you said, like hire that out. Right, so you hire that out and then the crew can do bigger projects or, or vice versa. You don't do big projects and you contract those. You know? Like we're talking about putting a bunch of signs out. You should you contract that out and let's take it off the list. You know, award a hundred thousand dollar project and get all signs done at once. Yeah, yeah. Options. Yes. Options. Yeah. yeah, I think there was a lot, I think there was a time, including now with a lot of highway crews, where they know they don't put value on the lost work. Task. So let's say you use you have the highway guys jumping, like watching some of jobs and stuff. They'll jump around to all the a lot of small projects without care for the plan of the road maintenance. And you know, the, well, we got put on uh, uh, regrading the library lawn. Yeah. Or sometimes we'll pull Mark off, and three guys are working on some shed, setting the shed. Yeah. Those are just shifting your force account money around at the expense of regular highway maintenance. So when Mark says, you know, I don't have three weeks for that sidewalk project on Ferry Street in my plan next year, maybe next year, but then things change and flood comes or whatever. So we had, we, he, his response lately has been, here's my list of things I can do for maintenance and keeping the town rolling on the annual highway maintenance plan. Those things have to be put off into the contract world, like the Garfield FEMA project with the Collins Pond. That's too deep for even our new excavator. Right. 
and it's going to take a month or six weeks or eight weeks to do. I can't just do that because the culvert's separated. He crosses his fingers, you know, because there's still a damaged pipe under the road, but he wants to go through the FEMA process and get that bid. So that's what this project will do. It will identify what's likely to get funded, what's because it would be a contractor job to put a river shore path along the Guyon River or maybe put a sidewalk on Ferry Street with a retaining wall. Those are things that Town Highway and High Park wouldn't do. If they did do it, you want to get he did a whole bunch of culverts and ditching this year with the new excavator because he had the fifth guy, but he wasn't distracted by a lot of FEMA work either, even though we had the flood. Sure. Yeah, he got lucky. Yeah, he got lucky on that recovery. So I, I'm just I'm I'm kind of projecting the future that one of the reasons you do the scoping work and play by the VTrans rules is to stay in their funding path. Yeah. Because they'll be yeah. just big enough where highway is not going to do it. Right. And if the town wants to do it, you have to make a choice that we'd be giving them more money for contracted non-grant money. So you can have a, we have a small projects line in the budget. You could double or triple that. And then Mark could potentially hire somebody to put a sidewalk on Ferry Street. Town of Richmond did a two-part thing this summer where they put a new sidewalk on Bridge Street right in front of their town office. The highway crew did all the removal, excavation, and subgrade. And they hired the contractor to come in and put the curbing and the sidewalk and the paving and PDA bumps that have to go in. It was, they didn't do that part of it, but they did all the demo as a way to share that cost. Okay. Scoping report, we'll get into that. What, are the, an over, right? yeah, what are the costs and how do you get this done? Okay, so I need a motion to accept the brand. And the stunted ramp, yes. 48,000. Okay, so we need to make a motion. We approve you to apply for the grant. Yeah, right. Got you do that already. Okay. All we got to do is just make an approval. Okay. Except we're accepting it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll First of all, I have to ask. I'll make okay. motion. Okay, you need a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of accepting the grant signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay, uh, pay adjustment for Chris. So here we have it. See, Kim is. Oh. Um, Kim is still on. We had been while Kim was out on. Leave Krista got an extra five five hundred five twenty five five even five even a a month to two fifty a pay period right um Kim is now as we know is is uh, back here she is we can't see her but we can <laughs> she's here um. And she's uh, well, Kim. Sort of, what are you? Uh, let's see, are you unmuted? Are you here with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Hi. Sure. So, 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 how are you? And, and what's your sort of what's your work schedule? How are you doing? How are you feeling? Scare everybody with COVID. Uh, well, scared the heck out of me too. So yeah, I bet. Um, <laughs> ruin a vacation. Yeah. So yeah, no vacation. That was ruined. My two weeks of vacation turned into two weeks of sick time. Um, I ended up in the hospital for two days. They wanted to monitor, you know, all my labs and make sure that there's something called CMV. They wanted to make sure I didn't get that, and I didn't get that. Um, so. I'm fine. In fact, I had to go down there today for more labs and they called me today and my immunity is back to my new post-transplant normal. Oh, oh yay. Yay. I'm, I'm at the very bottom of the acceptable range. Um, they think that it'll go, you know, more forward. It'll never be a hundred percent, but 
they are very, very pleased that that's that, that it's happened. And they wonder, they said, I wonder if COVID did this to you because <laughs> it came out of nowhere. When yeah. I was in the hospital two weeks ago, my immunity was like 1.9, 1.8. And it's now at 4.2. And the minimum is four. <laughs> so who knows? Anyhow, um, I am still wearing a mask though, just because um, of, you know, the COVID thing. I just, I, I know the CDC says I'm not contagious, but I just, for another couple of weeks until I feel, you know, a hundred percent, I, and I kind of, I really fatigued is the only downside from the COVID thing right now. Um, but other than that, you know, I was back to work, you know, fine before my fallout of vacation. Um, and I would have been back today, but I had to go do my lab. So um, I'll be back in the office tomorrow. My normal office hours have been, you know, whatever the clerk's office hours are. And that's what they were before I, my planned non-vacation. <laughs> okay. And so it sounds, hopefully now you're back regularly full time. I have been back. Right. Okay. No idea what to do. Okay. I don't want to see that and I'll let you back. Let me just chat with Kristen again. So well, I guess what's the what's the concern? Why is it on the agenda? Well, because while you were still at 1.9, you were being out again. Anytime anybody was showing any symptoms in the office, you were out. So it was still leaving, you know, at least Krista in this funny spot of Kim's here, but she's not here. And you don't know when you were going to be here. But it sounds like now, hopefully, we're all, you're, it's, <laughs> magically, I don't know. You had to go on vacation and get COVID to get better. That's a strange, that's a strange prescription. But as long as it worked for you, what the heck? You know, so I only, yeah, I was only out of the office. Well, I was only actually, how did that work, Justin? That one time that the listers were in, did I come in late? I came in at 10 30 or 11 because you guys were having a meeting and there were like seven people or eight people in the office. And so you told me when you thought the meeting was going to be over. So I came in. I haven't had, other than that time, I haven't had to be home. And even if I was home, it would have been working remotely like I did during COVID. It's not like I come home and sit on my thumbs. Right. I, mean, I don't like that implication because that's not what happens. So, um, so Kim, are you, are you thinking it would be fair to put Krista back to her original rate now that you're back full-time it should have gone back to the original rate when i was back full-time in july i came well actually i came back first week of august sorry first week of august because yeah. i was in the off i was in the office all of august and all of september with the exception of coming in late one day because there were a lot of people in the upstairs office. Well, you just took two weeks vacation, so that would that would minus that time. But uh, so let's just. Uh, 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 you're going to talk to Kristen. Yeah, I'll talk to Kristen. We'll talk about it. Right. They should go back to her yeah. regular salary. Right. Okay. I I still think that Krista should get something when I do take vacation. Um, you know, I. I came back um, and there, because when I was out on medical leave, my emails were getting forwarded to Krista and, you know, she was doing probably 80% of the email stuff. Um, when I'm on vacation, my emails don't get forwarded to her. So there, when I came back from 
well, I, I keep saying vacation, but it ended up being sick time. Um, when I came back, uh, I still had two weeks worth of emails that required work, you know, journal entries for Jen, um, you know, processing PayPal payments for the library, um, you know, all these things that come through my email, uh, I still had to do all of those things. But when I'm out, Krista's having to make decisions uh, for of, of whatever nature. So if I take a week's vacation, I think that she should get something. When Mark French is out, Ryan gets something. And I don't know what the something should be for Krista. But if I take a week's vacation, I think she should get something. And I, I don't know what that is. And that's maybe a further discussion down the road. But I think she should get something when I, you know, take time off like that. Right. Yeah. That's what we're trying to figure out. It sounds like we've already, we're, we've already had up until this point that. So it would be right. something right. that we set right. to figure out what right. going right. forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll figure something out, Kim. I'm okay. glad you're feeling better. Yeah, me too. Oh <laughs> I would rather have been at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we go to ooh, all the exciting parts. Minutes. Oh, whoop, groupy minutes. Three of us that were here. Well, we have three of them to approve. Oh, yeah, because yeah, there was one we left. Yeah, I included the last ones, but not the split yeah. second as well. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. That's why we couldn't do that. Oh, right. There was enough of us here. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the 12th, but I wasn't here the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Right. And I did read them. So. The 12th, I'll approve. Or what? Motion. Okay. So we got a motion to approve the minutes of the 12th. All in favor signify by saying aye. Or I'll second that. You'll say I'm going to Yeah. Here. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I think, I, think I, opposed. Opposed. I think I have the same that we Yep, we've gone that okay. Then the 26th, I'll oh, make oh. a motion to approve those. Oh, sorry. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 I didn't see any question marks on that one. You didn't have any question marks. No, no, I didn't see it. Yeah. That's right. I'm getting good at clearing those up and support <laughs> <don't them>. <laughs> Um okay, with three of us. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Um, yeah, we've got two. Three, so it's 26. Matt made the motion and a second. Yeah, second. And then the, the yes, yes. So please step up, staying right. here. Hold on one second. Okay. Whoops, here we go. Oh, oh sorry. There we go. Okay. Oops. Sound good. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll take a couple of minutes here. Nope. Oh, okay. Oops. So we have to approve the what? Get get the words. Twenty second. Oh. But I wasn't here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Who was here for the twenty second? I think got everybody in. Else. Nobody else. No, you weren't here. The twenty second. No. Oh. Right. I wasn't. So I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. So it must have just so been Matt and Julie and you. Yeah. Oh, so oh boy. Yeah. Did you have fun? <laughs> you must have. <laughs> that was the quickest meeting you had all year. Oh, it was because I called. Yeah, got already done. That's right. Okay. In the minutes of the twenty second, uh, move to approve. Now we move. Rolling the second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And two abstentions. Yes. Oh, okay. We have a minute. All right. We're working on the warrant. Season. Well, there's a bunch. Okay. Let's do that. Are those all good for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. And I feel like we might have to do some stuff on Jen's finance movement. Do we have to do any action? Yeah, I'll read that. Um, there's a lot of on it. Mm -hmm. Was there anything in recommendation? Yep. Yep. Uh, there there was. Was. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. You spent too much money. Yeah, you spent too much money. <laughs> I, I, think, no, I did respond to her because we haven't received the check from the ASA yet. Like, oh, yeah. are, sorry, I didn't, Whatever. I guess I never did. It's like, it's like, it's just, this was a really nice quarterly report, but she did. Yeah, they always are. She does a yeah. really nice job. But I guess, no, I guess there really wasn't. I was thinking that oh, she the, wanted the, uh, the break. Break. Do we? What do we want to do paying for the Oh, break? for Guyon. Yeah, that's, I knew there was something. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's from our space. Yeah, we're thinking that with those. <laughs> And I sent her an email just sort of outlining some suggestions for the format. Mm -hmm. So when you get a report like that, it should you should have like a, a highlight or a box that says, you know, requested action item. You know, so oh. everything's sort of it's yeah, text, yes. look, yeah, it's textual, so it kind of almost yeah. blurs your eyes a little bit. And then where she was listing a whole bunch of numbers on one paragraph, yeah, you know. Take take a, a second and put it into an Excel table so if you can look at a yeah. table, just little things like that. But yeah, generally it's pretty comprehensive. Of yeah, what she needs and you know, just a little piece so they can a little bit easier to read. If, and if she absolutely yeah. wants an action item, right. yeah, just, right. you really call right. it out. That's Otherwise, right. it's, it's, right. I you think there was something, it. but you can't find it. Right. Yeah. So we'll work, work on that. Just a just little fine. bleak. Yeah. Yeah. But there's yeah. tons of good information there. The, uh, yeah. the Guy and Valley Hall's overage amount is... 6,000? Yes. No, uh, yeah, 6,800. So that that number could be an appropriation from ARPA. We do it with the town buildings fund now that was created back in March for all town buildings, including GBH. Um, Better to use ARPA. Yeah. Better to use ARPA just because we have that money now and we need it. Right. We need mm -hmm. to cover that. I know there was an intention of the GVH building from way back uh, when it, to, in 2020 when the select board said we don't want to spend local tax dollars on that. Right. Yep. I think that's still a theme of that project. Yeah. Luckily, the ARPA, yep. the, luckily yeah. the ARPA came back on top of that yep. for, for dogs and yeah, yeah. windows. Right. Yeah, <laughs> dogs, windows, all kinds of odd things. Yeah. So, so that was <laughs> that would be a direction to to Jen to allow uh, obligate and spend the overage at the uh, from the ARPA funds, and she'll create a an account for that. Okay. With the transfer. Okay, then I, yeah, I will make a motion um, to use ARPA funds in the amount of $6,801 to cover the overspend of, at the Guyon River Hall. I'll second it. I did, for discussion, I did look at what that overage was, and some of it absolutely was unanticipated. So there was an original cost estimate from the window people at 60,000 up to the grant was 50. So there was already a mismatch. And but we knew that, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And then the town attorney got involved with the easement that oh. was a requirement, but not anticipated in the original budget. Yeah. The town attorney wanted a survey, not in the original budget, unanticipated. Uh, the sign, uh, that was sort of implied in the grant agreement but didn't come up as a mandate until later. You know, so some of those things add up to $4,500 or something of additional cost that definitely was not part of the original presentation of the board. So you end up running around 70,000 and uh, 20,000 from other things, including a, a little bit of a cost increase, but still under the original budget. That's right. 61,000, I think was the final window number. So just so like open nice. That's all. That's all. No, I think that's just all. No, those are not. I don't look at those yet. Okay, so you got a motion. We got. We got a second down there, didn't we? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Steal the pen. I didn't steal your pen, I don't watch. Okay. Is there anything else?
and do a short I'm, executive. I'm just making so sure there's nothing else in the finance memo before you. Yeah. Okay. There's one paragraph in the finance memo that talks about unemployment insurance that, that is related to municipalities with under, under four employees. So all your small businesses are going to be small towns with one employee you're going to start paying unemployment where they haven't had to right. they've been exempt with the right. four or more rule. yeah uh but vlct also just sent another notice saying that towns have to decide to keep their two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar uninsured motorist covered or revert to the 10 million dollar pre-existing limit so a bunch of years ago, the board, BLCT board changed their policies and decided to reduce uninsured motors coverage to 250,000 for recurrence from the 10 million, but they never asked the towns <laughs> if they wanted to reduce the coverage. So now the state finance regulation board is asking the LCT to contact all the towns to make sure we sign off on which coverage limit the LCT didn't provide the difference between the two to us because we're paying on the 250000 now. They just said a modest uh, increase in coverage if you go back to the $10 million. I'm not sure what would cause a $10 million uninsured motorist claim. That awful lot. Yeah, I don't, I guess I'm not familiar enough with what would happen. The workers' comp, if the employee was driving on town property under our insurance that's where we're talking about they're working so they get workers comp right. they're injured I, I, the uninsured motorist covers other things but i don't know how i think 250 maybe that's the right number but 10 million was the additional cost that they're paying on the whole group so oh. they asked their provider what's cheaper and so anyway i don't know what you want to do but think about think about that if you find any reasons for or not I'll try to get from VLCT yeah. what their modest increase is. Okay. So see right. that, right. If you have that on the 24th. Okay. And the reasoning, because that is such a big difference. Yeah, I'm sure it was a group uh, insurance, maybe a manage, premium management tool that they decided to reduce coverages to reduce premiums. Oh, yeah. And to go back to 10 million doesn't sound like it's a lot, but I don't know if modest on, we, we pay 50,000 a year for our insurance. Modest is a little higher than what you might pay on your own homeowner's insurance. <laughs> Whether it's two thousand yeah. or ten dollars, I don't. Yeah, you know, modest, to me, modest to me sounds like it's in the five hundred to a thousand, maybe on a fifty thousand yeah. policy. Yeah, but I, I, I'll try to get that number okay. for the twenty fourth yeah. to, to have a decision from you whether you want to keep the two fifty or increase the ten million for uninsured motors. That's it. Anyways, so that's it. Okay, that's it. That's okay. all. That's all I saw in the memo. Okay. Um, do we need a motion to approve the warrants? Are we still looking them over? Oh, no, I think we got them all. Oh, yes, we do. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. Oh, okay. All in favor of approving the warrants signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Um, I want to talk about the fire station water. Up for review right now. So I made the new pro. Not attorney. I think last time it was let's talk to the, the minutes from last meeting. I said talk to yeah, talk to yeah, attorney. Right. Not back yet. Okay. Okay. Comments not back. So twenty fourth. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. That deadline. Talk to him. Right. Yeah. Okay. right. A couple of strategic things we need to the village sidewalk. talk about in the executive session. Yeah. The village anything. sidewalk maintenance is on the agenda for old and new, which is uh, still yeah. Mark and. The village people are supposed to be figuring out, um, come to an understanding on the level of maintenance. 
right. just like they try to do every year. But the last couple of years, the village crew has had some hit or miss issues. So Mark wants to their back up to three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They're full staff oh, now. Good. So hopefully they're going into the winter with full staff, which yeah. is general manager Brian said he feels good about their staffing. So okay. they yeah. should be good. Yeah. Brian has now become their full time or he's about to he's doing it permanently. Oh so good. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So we I think we do talk to them regularly to yeah. you know, so that's it. Okay. I guess we can all go home. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Oh.